right now? Let me put this into the yep. slideshow. We uh, we see it. Okay. <clears throat> so um, I, I, what I'd like to go into today is, you know, there's a lot of concern about what's um, new in logics and uh, how we are rolling out our uh, high performance hardware and, and all the different versionings for Studio. So what I'd like to get into today is, um, first of all, um, going through the older versions of Logix uh, or actually Studio um, and um, just grounding you what, 20, what 24 is, 26 and 27 before diving into 28. So in version 24, um, you know, we introduced program parameters, a logical organizer. Um, we have a partial import online enhancement set up, some module encapsulation for AOIs, and then we increased our program, our support for, for the amount of programs and tasks that can be supported and, and pulled in finally factory talk alarms and events which when we moved over to studio disappeared, right? So we were in the, in the throes of trying to standardize or call a new golden release. Um, for those that are familiar, right, the studio um, or, or RSLogix 5000 version 20 was our golden release and, and we had a lot of reasons for that. Um, the bigger ones is that, you know, from a controller's implementation standpoint, we were allowed to have um, separate uh, OS is running in the background, namely XP and Windows 7, Win, uh, Win 7, um, 32 and 64 bit. And so on the right hand side, you, you, uh, some of the tools that came along for the RIVE version 24 uh, is the first, the first setup of compare merge tool, um, which has been enhanced to, to do go from two um, separate programs now to three. Um, users simultaneously making edits on the online uh, solution sets. And then, uh, as you can see, the operating systems there that are supported. So uh, that, that was 24 So the, the, the for Studio. And, and um, what we introduced for version 26 was really around uh, the introduction of our Kinetics line. So we added a uh, motion hardware profile uh, extensions for the new 5700. Again, note the operating system supports still there with Win7, Professional, Home, and so forth on down the line there. But the other part of that equation for 26 is we, we enable license-based source protection. Um, and, 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 and that's a big deal uh, given that we, we're in, this, in, in the um, security world where we need to be able to understand how to um, take the USB port uh, and, and provide information uh, for transporting projects and opening up information in those projects. And so that was really what 26 is about was the introduction of 5700. Um, and, and, and so we, the cadence of releases for Studio all came around migrating away from 18 months or a year for every major release to uh, now every scheduled uh, or at least targeted for June and October. So that's the thought process. Okay, so the minor, the major release, uh, so 29 is actually due out the end of the month, and then 30 will release around automation fair. All right. So we were a little um, um, schizophrenic in regards to how we release these because we were trying to do patches for security as well as um, when we first introduced Studio to now adding the likes of, of Motion and, and some of the other key components that I'll get into today. Version 27 um, for Studio was, was where we decided that we were going to introduce the likes of our View Designer uh, and uh, Application Code Manager as well as Architect. So we had new major components that came along for uh, the first iteration of, of why Studio's name became to be. Um, we uh, moved away from the Ars Logix um, uh, naming conventions so that that became Logix Designer for all the controllers. And then we added some, uh, added some tools and solutions around the Panel View 5000 family, uh, which are the high new uh, improved 
uh, solutions for panel views running in parallel with Panel View Plus 7s, uh, which was why 27 came to be, and that now has been out almost a year. Uh, Application Code Manager is a nice library reuse tool uh, from the standpoint of being able to do ma massive bulk edits um, uh, where you would have a lot of similarities with programming and, and um, end user setups. And then the other thing that was revamped for those that know and have been around Alan Bradley a while is we had a uh, tool called Architect. It used to be called RS Architect. Uh, we re repackage it to to implement uh, the likes of our free tool sets with the Integrated Architecture Builder, uh, as well as Proposal Works, using that capacity tool, uh, Plant PAX uh, Systems Estimator. Um, so there are a lot of free tools that are tied into this that allows you to take libraries, stitch together programs and projects, stitch together uh, a architecture. Um, with the pick list and have additions for things like commissioning and some of the personality that you would normally assign when you're when you're putting together programs. All right, so that's that's really a really short synopsis of, of the uh, of what we've done for Studio uh, from 24 to 27. I know that we've had several users groups uh, prior to this one uh, identifying. Um, use cases for architect and we've talked at a high level on application code manager and what the environment differentials were for version 24 because that's our new golden release uh, for process uh, but I wanted to give you a, a sort of a, a background before I jump into this high performance very high discrete sort of machine based solution that can be used in some processes uh, but should be uh, approached with a lot of caution any questions before I jump into version 28? And if there's I any questions on the web, uh, everyone's lines mute, but um, uh, you can raise your hand on the web, or it looks like you might be good, Chris. So. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, Studio 5000 version 28 highlights, simplifying your journey. And, and so when you're opening up the Logic Designer, you'll see the project types. You have Architect, which you'll talk to. There's a Factory Talk View button there, uh, Logic Designer, and View Designer. And if you notice, you'll see some of the uh, high, high performance control sets there, uh, as well as ones that you are used to seeing. Uh, with the 5370s, 5380s, the 5570s and 80s, and on down the line. All right. Um, so this is what the first uh, set screen set will look like for a new project. Um, a lot of not a lot of differences, but some substantial ones because now you have the, the the access to the newer, more powerful processors that we've introduced. So one of the first things that we introduced uh, that that has come along is um, having this channel level data structure. And, and the, the intent here is to provide you know, health status um, and, and being able to validate your data with, with a, a status bit. Um, and if you notice, um, in your tree here, uh, there is information around your analog and digital. And, and a health status will give you states of good, uncertain, and faulted. Um, so the nice thing about that is, We've, we've added a future-proof um, solution um, so we can allocate reserve bits. And, and future-proof proofing really just means that you know, the code within Logic's designer will not have to change going forward with any new hardware that you add um, uh, for uh, expansion. And, and the thought process we had is to standardize this structure, uh, which allows for an easier and robust way of adopting you know, new hardware into the structure. All right. Uh, the next thing is a the general uh, editor uh, um, upgrade. So before, you know, how will we be able to identify the determination of a lonely routine when you're in the in the verification piece? So notice there, there, there's no JSR uh, for for routine there, uh, but then the error message pops up. Um, giving you a warning that um, there is not anything 
that's corresponding to the main uh, root lo locating the main routine. So it's sort of an orphan. So right now in version 28, this is this function is always on, and and you, you still search uh, for any unscheduled program uh, that will have the ability, you know, that that uh, that that you have on task. Now in the future we will turn this uh, off uh, from a warning standpoint or uh, in the unscheduled task uh, moving forward. But this is a nice feature uh, just so that you can identify during the verification stage of your programming um, if, if there's something that you have out there a running that's uh, an orphan. Okay, so logical, the logical organizer, again, this is the, the same scenario that we have for version 24. Um, so for the right clicking, if you find you want to be able to find this, uh, you know, find this portion of your logic in the logical organizer from the control organizer, um, notice that it launches the logical organizer. Uh, then you can find um, and navigate to in a highlighted area where within your logical organizer um, it would exist. Chronic, you know how on how your code is executing. So it, it is bidirectional. You can go back and forth toggling on what your default uh, organizer uh, is that you're using when you're programming. So this is another another addition to the logic organizer that uh, that if you're, you've used in version 20, you, you you've not seen. Now if you're using 24, you, you have seen this, but this is an, an addition that we have here. The uh, structured text editor. Another new feature set that I that I actually am pretty excited about. Uh, you know, the nice thing is being able to add future capability to auto insert routine names and authors and dates, um, and, and it occurs with with you know syntax that you can use in the software to you know as as insertion is needed. So the nice thing is here, you, you can include a header on on to create, but it gives you a nice um, Customized header uh, with with information uh, for routine, who created it, who it was, and the rev history. So really nice uh, addition here for version 28. All right. So the next set of of, of um, features are all predicated around um, factory talk and, and and users. Okay. So. Um, we we are in the business of trying to make sure that if you uh, purchase and use uh, Rockwell equipment, we want to make sure that the integration solutions are in lockstep. So what that simply means is whether the software that you use on top of the hardware is agnostic uh, to another um, company um, control system uh, or not, we want to make sure that the, the temporary part, the factory, the factory talk uh, use case can can apply. So in this particular case, if you have a, a special account um, that you set up using a temp or a password, you can create it ahead of time and, and, and assign privileges based on those accounts. And the primary use case here is making sure that if you want someone to go in and, and um, Add some uh, add some content uh, to to your program sets that are may that may not be in policy. You, you have the ability to do that with a temporary user setup. You know the the challenge here is is um, to be able to allow someone to be able to um, use communication over the over the phone or a requester to be able to get in and take a look at the the solution uh, with with the factory talk uh, policy. Um, but the, the only caveat with this with this solution is the requester must be a member of the directory in order to request and validate the password. So the, the, this does provide a little more robust um, a solution, but also from a security standpoint, it could give you some some clarity on if you want someone to come in as a guest into the policy to help out with uh, with taking a look at um, your program sets. Um, Another security uh, feature that we've added um, is setting permissions um, by, um, you know, for the different programs that you would have. You know, so again, you got to make sure that these policies are in play, but you can have someone um, take a look at um, take a look at permissions by um, 
product line or production level. Um, the directory does not give mod modify whether it's one or a thousand controllers, but you do have the ability to create permissions by category, and that's what this is outlining. Um, and so that's that's pretty new. So before, when you were securing a controller's program a project file, you know a logical name was created in the factory talk directory, and, and that meant that every time you added a new controller that was secure, a new object had to be created in the directory. And now you have the ability to to, to have some more flexibility when, when setting uh, and securing projects. Okay. Um, this one is is uh, is good because um, before 28 we had um, when a controller was secure you had to have policies for establishing routines, add-on instructions and tags, um, as well as uh, you know for the entire project. So now um, with 28 you can you can also add some segmentation uh, if you had several several folks wanting to make edits to uh, routines. Um, you can do that individually and not uh, have the entire program uh, main program exposed or main routine exposed. You can you can get into those subroutines and make edits um, uh, with with permission sets. So that's that's new for 28. Okay. Um, guest user accesses, you know, a lot of times with our OEMs or even SIs, we want to control access to the project file and give it, you know, the end customer some level access. So now with this feature, that's possible. You know, SIs or OEMs will be able to design or def um, give desired level of access to predefined groups uh, that you call guest users. And, and if anyone is logged on, um, to the factory talk directory, they, they will be able to have access to to, uh, to guest users. To, you know, you have to, to but to use this function, you have to require you have to um, use the function called required match security authentication, authority ID for authentication or authorization, and that's a checkbox that has to be selected in the project file. Okay. Um, there is also a secondary uh, authority. Uh, security authority that's that's that goes along with guest guest user as a as kind of sort of a second line of defense. You know, if it, in the previous scenario, uh, if you want to further limit access to the project file, you can you can you can have this enabled. Uh, so again, if if an SI or an OEM uh, specifies a guest user and permits them to go online, the end user may restrict it uh, in this particular setup, um, which which is which is. It's good. When the second, second, the secondary security authority actually allows or denies permit the second guest from using it, so you can restrict the action, restrict the action, or allow actions that have been denied to guest users. So again, the factory talk directory is key. You have to use it in the secondary um, security authority, and it must be, you must have the, you know, permission set, you know, from a, at the logical, you know, logical name. In, in the user in the user file. All right. Um, again, you know another factory talk uh, improvement, and again the, the whole point of the factory talk improvements are, you know, integrated architecture in general is going through an upgrade, right? So we have our general purpose solution sets. Um, now we we've added our pro high performance that goes in parallel with those. And we're building out those new new solutions, whether it be panel view five thousands, the new controllers, or the new I/O. We also needed to make sure that, from a factory talk policy standpoint, um, some of the some of the gotchas that we've had previously, we've also we, you know we to we wanted to correct. So again, you know, for those who are familiar with factory talk security, the system tray utility is here is used to confirm. Um, if you're uh, logged into um, into the directory, so again, logical names are used to hold the security policies for the controllers, which are which are the project files, uh, with that same name. So you know, previously, the only way you you could see them is to use a resource that at, at may not have utilized uh, over time. So you know, our ability to integrate factory talk. Policies for security uh, allows for us to, uh, you know, provide some status and, and, and some flexibility with how you're 
how you're integrating into your policies. All right. So that's really it for you know our um, our software additions for for version 28. I would ask that um, if you if you do take a look at adding version 28 to your portfolio or your control systems, um, there are a couple of documents that I will get into a little bit that can give you some some um, some course of direction. The biggest takeaway, if I were to leave you with something for version 28, is it is a simplex only solution for controllers. Um, and some of the um, I want to say keep outs that you would have for the other versions around coding uh, have been uh, relaxed to gain, to gain efficiencies on, on users, user memory uh, within those control sets. So uh, there is a migration document that I'll get into in a bit that can help you uh, if you're making migrations from uh, the L7 to the L8 with using um, you know, the program scheme. But um, I would I would highly advise you to take a look at you know um, our our resources on you know the literature library and our Rockwell website to gain a little more insight or talk to your automation specialist or myself around you know ways that you can implement version 28. Okay, so um, the first thing I want to get into is the 5580 controllers. Um, you know. Wayne was showing, you know, a, a slideshow of, of some of the improved capabilities for the 5580. Um, so a single slot quad core uh, chip this inside, um, and, and this slide doesn't do it justice in regards to the ability to uh, have some performance increases over the L7, whether that be motion, I/O, Ethernet capacity, or just flat out, uh, you know, flat out functionality improvement. Um, one, you have a one gig Ethernet IP port that's on board, um, so that means that Class Zero or One um, I/O uh, packets per second is up to 128,000, uh, which is which is which is you know pretty large, uh, and that that our motion support is increased uh, to support you know high speed I/O. The big, the big piece here is if you do use the gig, use the gig port. Now this will be a running theme throughout the solution, this uh, set of solutions that I'm providing. You should use the the Stratix 5400 um, strat, uh, managed switch, which, which is our gig port solution to support the architecture for the simplex design. Um, you know, so this this processor is, in my opinion, is a very high discrete solution. Uh, you could use it in some process places, uh, but this was intended for high access count for motion and things that you needed uh, very high screw to screw time. Very much ideal for OEMs. Could be used for process OEMs uh, or very, um, very I'd say in, in, the, in any user solution, just be cautious on how you use it. This is not a direct replacement for the 5570s. We're using the, the 5570s. We'll continue to run along and be active um, because how we've delineated uh, dy dynamic and, and static uh, functionality is completely different than, than the 5570s, so it's a different piece. Again, this is not a replacer. This is just a high-performance version of the L7s that you have out there today. Um, Notice all the different um, uh, regional and, and certain uh, global certifications that you have there from um, uh, FM and CE and ICEX and all these fixings are out there for the L7. Uh, this has the same uh, setup where you have a uh, you have a USB. There's a electrolytic cap and um, a heat sink on the side because it's you know it gets pretty hot. Like what we used to joke and call this the McDonald's uh, controller because it has a caution hot on the side just because the heat sinks so massive for having a quad core chip. Uh, but it is substantially faster. If you do have one in, in hand, it, it is and it is a very much heavier than the L7 uh, is today. Um, some other stats that that are good. Um, you know the 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 old nomenclature when you had the 5570 and and to keep out of having a continuous task uh, and how you would use that, that, that goes away simply because, um, because of the pure bandwidth and, and processing power that you have now. Um, so, so design 
recommendations, uh, you know, are are you know around runtime memory and, and how that's consumed. So, because we made some separation on how to uh, change and use the application memory setups, notice that the 5570 controller set that had uh, ranges from 2 meg to 32 meg have all changed to uh, different increased memory size uh, for, for our first release, which was the 4083 and 85E. Uh, we have a 10 and 40 uh, meg size, uh, which is uh, a lot more. So you get 8% or 8 meg more for the, fit, for, for the equivalent for the 75 in size, uh, and another 2 meg for the uh, 83. So that's, that, that's a benefit of, of having high speed quad cores and then uh, making some, making some uh, design changes in regards to how Studio would interact with the controller. Okay. Um, another slice of how to look at it, the feature sets in comparison between using a 5570 and an 80 is, you know, the overall performance is, is about 5 to 20 times depending on the type of program that you're using or the type of instruction set that you're using. Um, access per controller for motion is, is substantially higher. Uh, class 1 and Class 3 connections all now are, are uh, driven not out of connections but more around nodes. Now for those Siemens users or, or other uh, control, uh, control house users, this is, a, this is a common nomenclature for what's connected to the actual device. So notice the L83 and 85 do have limits for Ethernet nodes and then there's an illustration for what that, would, what that looks like. Uh, where each connect, you know, which device counts as a node and what, you know, versus the actual connections and ports. Um, and then on down to the, uh, you know, being able to measure the uh, class, the class one and zero and then class three packets per second now has, has some definition around it. Before that was a little difficult to track because of how we went about uh, measuring traffic across the wire. All right. So again, a very, very powerful processor uh, that we've in introduced here. But again, just be careful because it's not a, um, it is not a high availability redundant solution as of yet. One of the biggest uh, pro uh, uh, documents that I think that you should, you should definitely look at if you are making a transition from programming from an L7 to an L8 or you're adding an LA to an existing uh, solution set is um, the, the program, program migration guide. Uh, this provides some, some good information around application, conversion, instruction, and execution, and, and any other guidelines that gives you a, a flavor of going from L7s to L8. It's a very, very good document. I expect to see the same solution set for the, the, um, the new 5380s that have, have arrived because some of the keepouts are very similar. So there will probably be an addition to this document or another pub that, that we'll have to get out since we've just re released the uh, uh, 5380 series. Um, the math related instructions, instruction piece of the chapter, uh, for chapter 3 is very important because this, is, this goes back to some of the solutions that I was uh, um, hinting at where there were assumptions that were made in the program, the code well, would, would give you keep outs to say you can't do that. Um, those, those, those rules have been relaxed and the expectation is that you um, implement these, these math related instructions during programming um, so that you don't uh, run into some trouble when you're, when you're making a change to go to version 28. Um, as always, we, uh, for controllers, we, we provide uh, a popular reference drawing. This drawing is simply a way of abounding, hey, these are some of the things that we've tested, and this is a good place to start to take a look at how uh, the architecture could be implemented. Uh, notice on this architecture you have the likes of, you know, a one gig solution using the 5069 I.O., which I'll get into, uh, as well as having a gig port here in the middle, and uh, a but then you're also utilizing, you know, the 100 meg lines for the Panel V plus sevens, 
and some of the traditional I, uh, IO and, and uh, VFDs that you that you would commonly use today. So this is a mixed speed media solution where you could have either copper or fiber running at uh, high speed, um, uh, which is essential for for enabling a high speed solution uh, that we're implementing. Because we do recognize that you will have mixed systems, whether they're 58, 5580s or 50, 5570s, that may exist in the same chassis set. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the next uh, solution is the 5380s. Uh, so again, this is a quad-core solution set. A um, little different for, for those who are familiar, because the uh, Ethernet comms is on board. Um, you know, you have the enhanced security feature sets for the digitally signed control set and firmware, the USB port, very similar. Um, and and in, and in, in this solution set, you do have uh, the ability to have 5069 uh, either connected or as a distributed IL solution uh, because the bus is, is, uh, is the same. Um, Again, you have the ability to uh, have dual configurable IP port, um, and that, that has been enabled for version 28 or 29 here, uh, where you could have a separate, um, the, the two USB ports that exist on this controller can be enhanced to use separate Macs or a single Mac, uh, depending on your, on your uh, depending on how you, how you have your uh, system architected. Um, Again, a get one gig Ethernet port uh, also exists. Um, decreased scan scan times and increases motion count. So this is going to be scaled very similar to what we talked about earlier with the 5580 and the 5570. You know, having a quad core solution set. You know, memory backup without a battery. Um, the other thing that's notable is because of the uh, you know high speed backplane. Uh, you know, you could have a, a data rate screw to screw time of, of, of 4.4 microseconds, which is which is pretty substantial. Um, and and uh, you know, having a dual one gig Ethernet port uh, will give you some flexibility in this platform as well. So it's it's a nice solution that uh, again adds to the high performance. Uh, you know, capability of of, uh, of compact logics. Now, just just as the same scenario as as I said with the control logic solution, this is not a 5370 replacer. This is a ANI that gives you a high performance, high screw to screw, discrete solution set uh, when you're trying to improve improve your access count and speed uh, with with going from end, end device to end device. Um, more notable highlights for the 5380, um, you know, code instruction, time limits, access counts. And so this is a nice table that gives you an idea of, of how we've implemented the use of the 5370 and that this new 5380 platform will incorporate safety. That's not there yet. Phase manager is not there yet. Um, but motion, you know, high speed. Uh, and then using complexity allow you know what what kind of accesses do you have to user memory and and what you can do has improved just because of the pure pipe the pipe being bigger for data uh, for the 50, 5380 and access to to the new next generation 5069. All right. One other thing that's neat uh, and new is before we used to have a lot of time uh, impact on the con on a, uh, on the controller because given the compact logics having uh, the Ethernet port embedded into the comms, you know the the uh, chipset with the dual core had to, to uh, you know provide some priority, and so the overhead for the for the system time slice uh, needed to be adjusted. Um, just because you had some communication uh, pull for the CPU that is now gone. Before you would, uh, you know, have 20% of the controller scan that was used for CPU communications. That that no longer is that no longer is uh, an issue because the communication now has been separated from the control. So that is a big, big impact for performance, and actually helps you, uh, I think, in, in freeing up some of that user control versus motion control for those type of users. Um, 
also programming language execution and tasks. Um, th those have improved. So notice um, with, with if you had uh, multiple tasks running, you know, the L3, the older uh, Atlas-based chipsets had 168 millisecond scan time. Uh, the 5370, the, 5370, the L3Y, we call it, is 45 milliseconds, and the 5380 is a lot smaller. Uh, the task switching times are have gotten traditionally uh, uh, better just because now you have you know more more computing power and separating the, the uh, at a at a board level separating those uh, circuits have, have allowed for a lot more uh, a lot higher performance execution with the likes of ladder and structured text as as indicated on the left hand side. So again, a lot of performance increases. Very high discrete um, uh, solution sets, high motion. Um, if you do use this for a process solution centric, a centric solution, again, just be cautious of the changing, uh, some of the changes that you might use from a coding standpoint, um, and 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 then also um, how how you're implementing a, a mixed system or commissioning a new one. Just make sure you get with us so that we can we can uh, give you some guidelines. Now, staying traditional to all the Ethernet solutions that we have on board, Compact Logics does have a control task monitor, uh, embedded web page. Um, so, you know, whether that's a switch or anything else, because it is Ethernet, you do have the availability to take a look at the Ethernet MAC and the IP addresses and the serial number and everything from an embedded web page, uh, as well as seeing that traditional controller task solution set of, of what your utilization is around the, the diagnostics related to Ethernet. So it's a real nice solution set that uh, is in, keeps in play that we have with the, with the uh, Ethernet devices that we have out there today. Uh, the performance and features comparison, similar to the L8 and the L7, I mean, uh, we have the uh, you know, 5 to 20 times uh, for over to overall performance. Again, the memory is scaled, you know, um, so instead of it being a 40 meg type solution set, you do have the ability to have something that's uh, a smaller 2, two meg and 4 meg. Um, so, it, you know, you do, get, you do get more of a solution uh, from a memory size standpoint than you would have normally. Uh, but uh, this, the, the, the designation differences between, by, by features, you can see the differences as indicated what Wayne showed a little earlier uh, between the 8 series and the 7 series for control and compact logics. Um, you know, the Ethernet messaging, again, for, for Ethernet uh, the, uh, packets per second, more defined at the control logics, the compact logics level but substantially more than you would have gotten you know, moving from a L7 I mean, a 5370 to a 5380. Okay. And uh, Compact Logics general specifications. How am I doing on time? I think I have uh, a little more time left. Um, if, you know, at release we do have IECEX and and uh, GOS and some of the the certs that are necessary. CTIC. Um, and then what's coming after that is Marine. Uh, I'll keep you guys posted on when that becomes available for marine usage. Uh, but a lot of the fixings are still the same around operating temperature uh, all the way down through shock. That's a consistent logics button. Uh, been in those test labs and they run, run them through the uh, gambit. If we are investigating a high temperature version to combat logics from similar to what we've done uh, in the past uh, for moving forward, so that's something I'm going to have to take a look at and provide to you guys and gals. Okay, um, the next generation compact I.O. So before I get into this, I just want to give you an idea that we are in, in the process of refreshing uh, or adding, actually adding uh, a high uh, solution set, performance solution set for a lot of the different I.O. Uh, families that we have. So Compact I.O. is the, is the first out to shoot. Um, it, it, it is a, it has a we have a 5069 uh, um, a, a Ethernet adapter 
It has two ports, like most of the Ethernet uh, modules, supports up to 31 local modules, device level ring config, and a one gig uh, embed switch technology for device level ring solution sets. Um, and at, on the first phase releases, it supports 5580 and 5380 is only because of the high speed. Uh, and, 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 the, and the screw time, screw to screw time is 50 microseconds, which is pretty fast. But the, the form factor um, is, you know, very similar to sort of a point thought process. Um, and, and, you know, this is the first of a few I.O. iterations that we're going to be releasing around high, high speed solutions. So uh, 1756 is going to have another solution. We'll add another solution for um, on machine I.O. Uh, as well as uh, flex. So those. this is the first out the shoot of high speed. Um, here are the flavors that you have, you know, IV16s and, you know, um, high speed counters and a field device piece, a field distribution piece, uh, reserving addresses, outputs and inputs, um, and operating temperatures here of, of 0 to 60 and negative 25 to 85 degrees C. Uh, so this is a little closer look at what that for, what that may look like, you know, for 5069 uh, uh, digital in. Um, here are the wiring uh, set up. The I/O removable terminals are sold separately. Um, and um, some one of the main questions I normally get with this solution set is, you know, what's our solution going to be for uh, IFMs? I have I will have to get that to you as well. But this is a you know we have a power status and indicator, uh, catalog number and uh, product type that, that sits on the uh, input modules. Um, here's a little more information on the, uh, a little, uh, for, for what the attributes are for input delay times and drift. Um, and again, a lot of this information can be found online. Um, the output module is very similar. Again, you have a, a module status indicator. Um, the bezel gives you an idea what the product types are. External fill power uh, on, on on for my channel, and again the removable terminals are sold separately. Uh, and again, the delay time for the back plane to screw is very fast. It's 100 microseconds at plus or minus microsecond, uh, 10 microseconds, uh, and it's degraded based on some of the temperature that you'll see um, for this IB16 and 16F. The input modules, uh, very similar. Uh, you know, the, the, the big takeaway here is the scan times. Uh, uh, it's very fast by channel, uh, four differential uh, for inputs, 16-bits uh, resolution uh, for uh, unipolar, and then 15 bits plus assigned polar. So that's a pretty high resolution uh, for voltage. Uh, and the same can be said for the current at 16 bits apiece. So that's, that's, that's substantially fine. So as a, for the folks who use Compact Logix, I, I remember when we were at, when we introduced the first L um, set of Compact Logix, we were at 12 and 14 bits, and it just wasn't getting it done for as far as general resolution. Uh, output modules, again, the same scenario, module status and such. So again, you know, I can, I, I, I could go through each one of these, but I just wanted to give you a flavor for which one, what each of the different modules look like. You know, here's a high speed counter version, um, and then what the pulse width and separation uh, would be, uh, and some of the attributes, as well as, um, you know, what the field power distribution module looks like, which is a little different. Uh, normal times you would you would have to rely on the backplane to make the, the designation for power. This does a lot of assigning uh, on on uh, how that power is distributed down the wire or down the uh, down the rail. And then there's also an address reserve module uh, that's set up, and and that's there for any time you would want to have um, you know a reservation for some sort of future. You could put a reserve module in, almost like a blank um, would be for uh, control logics. Now you have this; you could stop and say, "We know we're going to add, but we don't know what type of flavor we're going to add into the uh, into the module and add to the to the actual uh, backplane." So that you could put this in as a as a keep a keepsake for a future module. 
Um, and then, you know, for the compact I.O., we have the general specs. We have certs here that are out the door, and then and the Marine usually follows. And, and these, are, these are very identical to the L7, L8s and the, uh, and the, uh, and the 5380s solutions that I, that I talked about a little earlier. Now, in order to be able to use these devices over from using managed switches and having topologies around that, I, I wanted to bring back just, I, know, I don't know if, I think we've talked about this in prior users group, but the Stratix 5400 managed switch is, is the solution you need. And we do have some complementary, not complementary, but some um, uh, media devices that go along with that that are high speed um, uh, cables. But, you know, the big takeaway is this is our all gig port option. Uh, it's a layer three capability site sort of segmentation switch. Uh, has the face plates that we have for factory top view that you want to see for a lot of the switches. Uh, add-on programs, I mean add-on profiles and, and, and tags that are designated in 5000. You know, we have power over Ethernet and, and network address translation capabilities as well as having the traditional enhanced security setups that we would have for all of our Cisco devices. Um, and this is this is a Cisco device, so you, you if you, you're used to command line editing or client command line interfaces or uh, the network assistant, you know that capability for setup is there, but we we you know from a from a getting started having and using optimized smart port configs is a good way to go, um, uh, or if you have a program, uh, if you have a configuration setup, you can use this secure digital card and and uh, and deploy this device pretty easily. So again, this is a necessary uh, need for a high performance architecture. So I have a couple more slides left, and then we can we can stop for questions. Um, the first one is, you know, uh, the first architecture that I want to show is just utilizing that you we're leveraging the 5400 with all the gig ports, high speed communication, L8 and 5069, um, and and using that that traffic stream which is identified as red uh, for high for gig copper. We have also have fiber copper that we can use, or fiber, uh, I'm sorry, fiber gig, fiber gig fiber that we can use, which is dotted line red, uh, and that, those are starring out to uh, the different uh, 5069 I/O uh, from a high from a high performance screw to screw response. Then we also have a 100 meg copper setup going to an ETAP, uh, and that that can be distributed information for device level ring. Uh, to point and VFDs and um, and, and, a, and a penalty plus seven at a different speed. Now I will caution you that if you do have mixed mixed speeds in your chassis, um, you know the back plane, although double data rate and such, will auto negotiate to the lower speed based on end to end device. So that's why the 5400 is very critical because it gives you the option for both types of speed sets. All right. The second architecture, again, is being able to identify uh, the, the high-speed portion. So you have the high-speed port popping into this the high-speed port here, uh, starring out to the different high-speed uh, solutions for 5069, and again, having the ability to go 100 meg to uh, several ETAPs uh, over these motor control pieces and, 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 and point um, I/O to panel B plus sevens, and 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 using uh, everything else for I/O control and HMI communication, um, where you're segmenting the speeds based on port uh, solution. So uh, notice that this is a hundred meg solution out of the same chassis that you would have um, the controller with the high speed one. You have an EN2 TR or an EN2T that's conducting traffic. Uh, into this meta switch out to your different solution sets, uh, albeit device level ring, star, or linear topology. Okay, so you know the 5400 also allows for you know networks to be joined uh, either by rep or even if you want to do some VLAN separation or or network address table uh, translation setups. Uh, it's a pretty flexible mainstay that's needed for a high speed performance solutions. All right. So so that's that's pretty much all I had. Um, I think this is a good time to maybe ask questions or 
or uh, you know, fire them at me, and we can see what uh, what solutions, or applications you might be interested in, in trying to take a look at using. But the most important thing is, I want to make sure you're introduced to it. That if you're using a Panda View Plus Five, Panda View Five Thousand, you need version twenty eight. If you're using the L eighty three, you need a version twenty eight. Um, or uh, Panda View Plus Seven. I'm sorry, Panda View Plus Five Thousand Twenty Seven, Twenty Eight for for the new control sets. And knowing the difference between simplex control and design versus our version 24, which is our process release, I call it, uh, for plant PAX and anything using high availability and redundancy. And I think that's all I have. Thanks, Chris. We'll uh, open up to any questions here in the room or on our web. Again, in the web audience, um, you guys are muted out, but I, if you can just hit the little raise your hand flag, I can uh, unmute your line for you if you got a <clears throat> got a question. Or you can always put it in the chat window as well. So we'll hold for just a minute to see if anyone wants to uh, try to uh, get a question in there. I got a question. All right, right. Here, hold on. I'm gonna make you talk into this only so Chris can hear you. Hey, Chris. This is Ray with Keystone Engineering. A uh, question I have, do good. Do y'all still make use of scheduling of your networks using uh, like RS networks for uh, the Ethernet I.O.? Um, you can do that if you want to. You know, it's not necessary. Um, because the pipeline is so big over Ethernet, unlike control net, you don't, we don't care. Because of the speed, you don't, you don't care if it's scheduled or not. You can set the priority of the task as execution. And it doesn't necessarily have to be scheduled. To me, it's unnecessary overhead to do that. Um, so the overall answer is no. No, you don't have to, but that available that is available because we still use control net technology over RS networks. Right, but your RS networks also was capable of scheduling Ethernet I/O also. Correct. You can do that, but it's not a design record. It is not something that is a have to have. That, that capability is still there. Okay, you don't recommend it though. Hello? Oh, yeah, you hear us, Chris? It, you don't recommend having a schedule, I, is it? I don't. Okay. Um, I also had a question online about uh, L6 uh, processor supported in version 28, and I think the uh, quick answer to that is no. The L6 yeah. dropped out, I think, what, back in version, when it went to 21, 20. right? Yeah. 20, 20. 20, yeah, 21 is the last, 21 is the last version release. 21 is, is, is a switchover point. From 2021, you lose the L6s, the L223s, and, and all those older Atlas single core devices. Physically don't have the bandwidth for it. So you could still do an L, you could do L7s in version 28. But you cannot do the L8 in anything other than version 28 and higher, I think. Correct. Uh, so. Yep. Um, let's check, make sure there's no other questions out there. And it looks like it's all quiet. So um, with that, we will uh, probably end it at the top of the hour. So we did good on our time. I want to thank Chris uh, Watkins again for the excellent presentation, very informative. And once again, I appreciate all of our attendees for joining us, um, taking one hour out of your day to join us, either on the web or here live in person. So uh, we do appreciate that. So um, look for some emails uh, soon. Well, I'll give you the links. So a lot of the documentation Chris talked about, the, um, the conversion guide that he mentioned, will be posted on our um, second hour blog page that's dedicated to, to, to today's topic. So all those links will be made available to you uh, when I do my follow-up emails. So with that, we will end it and appreciate it. Thanks. Have a good day. Thank you, Chris.